welcome back to another episode of T-10, the show with 10-minute takes on the future of education and healthcare. I'm your host, Tim Fitzpatrick. On today's episode of T-10, you'll hear from Kim Delos Reyes, founder and CEO of Seek, a startup using AI to reimagine the way patients and providers communicate to bridge health inequities and solve critical problems she's seen firsthand in the ER and ICU. Kim and I first met virtually through the On Deck Health Fellowship and then in person at the Vive Conference in Miami earlier this year. Kim has such a fascinating, non-traditional background. She's a third-generation hospital owner and a nurse with 10 years of experience working for NYU, Bellevue, and Cornell here in New York. She's also an experienced startup operator, having worked for a couple of companies you may have heard of before, Carbon Health and Roe. And on top of that, as you'll hear in the conversation, Kim is also an AI engineering master's student who's currently on sabbatical to build her startup. On today's show, we get a sneak peek at what she's working on while her company is in stealth mode, but it sounds like she's anticipating their public launch later this year, so stay tuned. Without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Kim Delos Reyes, founder and CEO of Seek. All right. I've been looking forward to this one for a while. Kim, so good to have you on the show. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Tim. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's my pleasure. Known you for a while. Uh, I know we uh, we appear oftentimes in the same feed as two builders here in the New York City area, uh, working in healthcare in particular. Your background is fascinating, and it's one of the things that makes you so unique among us founders in the health tech scene. Uh, would love to give you a chance to kind of share your background and how you ended up building and working on Seek. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my story. It's sort of multi-layered, and so I'm going to give you a rundown of it. Please. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is Kim Delastreas. Um, I am actually a third-generation hospital owner. My family has been providing low-cost care to our community back in the Philippines since 1950. So we've been having, um, we set up this hospital uh, through my grandfather and it's still running strong. We're serving a community of about 750,000 people up wow. to date, uh, to now, presently. Uh, and my dad runs the hospital along with other family members um, who are also healthcare providers. Um, I was an ER trauma ICU nurse for about 10 years and I transitioned into tech about two and a half years ago. Uh, I worked for companies like Carbon Health and Roe, and around that same time too, I got in to pursue a master's in computer science with a focus in artificial intelligence Mm -hmm. and a secondary master's in AI ethics and a tertiary master's in global security with a focus in um, artificial intelligence and global health security. Wow, and... is that all on your certificate? I mean, how do you please continue? I didn't mean to cut you off, but that seems like a lot of education to, uh, to in there. Well, you know, uh, about a year into pursuing all three masters uh, at the same time, I realized that I was in this position to solve, you know, a lot of the problems that I witnessed in healthcare and decided to take sabbatical. So I'm currently on sabbatical. Um, to be able to build my own startup. Um, I call myself an accidental founder because I didn't exactly, you know, I didn't set out on this road to to be a founder or to solve, but this is this is where I find myself. So, yeah. Uh, well, I think, um, I mean, you and I personally know a lot of people who might describe themselves that way as accidental, but uh, when you really look at it, it's more so, so many things have happened that have kind of, then dots that became lines and now it just makes complete sense that you would be the one solving the problem that you're solving. But I, I think that is a great place to segue into the challenges. So you said you spent 10 years as an ICU nurse in the ER. Um, can you talk about some of the, the challenges in particular you've seen uh, before we get into the, the possibilities of AI? I'd love to really understand like what were those problems that stuck with you and that kind of keep you up at night or have you thinking about what to solve? Yeah, I mean, Tim, wow, there's 
so many things I can say oh, with, sure. with, with what challenges healthcare faces today. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was, you know, one of the things that I really thought about when I decided to take the, the founder journey. Um, one of the challenges that really you know, kept me up at night was how difficult it was for people to um, have the right types of conversations in healthcare. There's really a lack of time, opportunity, support, um, and many, many other different factors that prevent people from being able to actually connect. Um, and I think what happens here is it not just, it doesn't just complicate the patient health journey, but it also uh, provides a disservice to the people who are actually providing healthcare. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so, so one of the challenges that really stuck out to me and kept me up at night was the fact that people had this, um, this misalignment and this and, and that there was like a real chance of an opportunity to be able to create an, a solution for people to have better uh, connections and better conversations in healthcare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you, I, I'm, I'm curious where, so I'm, I'm aware of kind of where you were practicing, but can you give us a sense of, first of all, physically, where, where were you practicing and where were you seeing patients and kind of, uh, in the ER, I imagine, you know, time, of course, is is precious. Those connections you're describing are, I would imagine, not just you and the patient, but the entire care team who happens to see that patient during the course of being in the ICU or in the emergency department. Um, I, I'm curious, what, what are those patients? You know, communication obviously varies a ton. You know, I, I think back to my patient experience and it was, you know, you can describe it as acute, but also chronic in that it lasted multiple years. I had a lot of overlap on my care team over the, over that two year period. So I got to know, uh, know those people personally. And, and that was a big deal. That was kind of one of the highlights I always talk about, but in your case, it sounds like that's a huge challenge of how do you forge connections in a very short amount of time with someone who's just probably part of your journey as a patient and then part of your day as the provider. Uh, so where where were you? Who were you serving? And what are those communication challenges as it relates to kind of the, the patients and the types of patients you were seeing? So I spent a majority of my career uh, in the ER and the ICU. I worked simultaneously um, most of my career in two different places. And I love that. I love challenging myself. And that was mainly the reason why I chose to do that. Uh, I worked in Bellevue Hospital in the trauma ER um, unit there. And I worked in Cornell as a float ICU nurse. So as you can imagine, I've had a lot of patient conversations mm -hmm. um, and I've been able to really um, not just observe, but also like understand uh, patients from a perspective that I, I don't think a lot of people potentially could have. Um, the, the reason why patients have a really, really hard time connecting with their healthcare team uh, um, is for several reasons. So one, you know, health um, literacy is a real problem in, in America today. It's a, it's a global problem, but when we talk about us and, and here in the United States, um, about 90% of English speaking Americans have uh, below health literacy levels. Mm -hmm. And when we take that into perspective, health literacy is not just, you know, understanding what your healthcare um, situation is, it's being able to actually take uh, proper, um, how do you say it? Uh, choice and decision, right? And mm -hmm. to be able to like improve your healthcare journey. So the very first thing is health literacy and that challenge. 
the second thing is, you know, you've got your cultural differences. Um, you've got your, your gender um, differences uh, or misunderstandings and misalignments, et cetera. Um, and then on top of that, you are essentially given a very short amount of time to be able to have very stressful conversations or demanding conversations. And so what you're, what you're given here is like the perfect mix of an opportunity to fail. Um, and I believe that we aren't uh, treating these conversations and these connections as holistically as we can. And we're not approaching them um, with the same care and creativity um, or to be able to form solutions. Um, so, you know, to circle back with, with your question, I spent most of my career, a majority of my career, uh, serving patients um, in either really stressful, demanding situations in the ER and the ICU. And I saw what limited um, understanding and time and uh, for, for both patients and for the healthcare teams that were mm -hmm. providing them the care. Um, and, and sort of like what that could do or the lack of the solution um, that yeah. we could provide um, in that scenario. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a complex space um, and something that I think is worth like exploring. I couldn't agree more. I mean, 90% of Americans low or limited health literacy. I, yeah, if, if, Health literacy, because you know, this is we where we overlap. Obviously, our work uh, we we think a lot about how patients find information about their health, but also understand it and then use that health information to manage their own health and make those decisions. As you're talking about, and that's that's far beyond the ER. That's far beyond the ICU. Those are singular points in time. And and I love this idea of how do we make it a better conversation initially during this really stressful moment for that patient for that family um but also for the providers who are are human and managing their own stresses and seeing so many patients and trying to get to new cases uh there's just a lot of opportunity there so so can you walk me through now you have spent all that time with patients you have had some exposure to tech and you've worked with these companies that of course uh, i'm sure many listeners will be familiar with and know that they've They've made a tremendous impact on many of these adjacent areas and uh, will continue to do so and continue to grow. But now you also have the benefit of having spent so much time in the weeds thinking about where tech applications might be able to help these on these challenges so much so that you are pursuing three masters somehow. Uh, it's, I, I still don't fully understand how one can do that. But now you're at the point where you want to re-engage and say, I've learned something that kind of bells and light bulbs are going off and you're having this moment. Can you talk to us about what it was? What are you tying? What is that opportunity where you said, hey, AI, this field that's been around for decades, but now is really starting to make its way into healthcare. What is that connection between the problem you described and now this opportunity you're learning about? Oh. First off, I, I want to begin with answering that question with saying, like, I believe everything in healthcare has has the opportunity to innovate, um, whether that's mm -hmm. through AI or else, elsewhere. Um, and that's the exciting thing about healthcare. I think that's what's so exciting about what we're doing, right, Tim, is like there's just so many opportunities for us to um, have an impact generational impact if, if it may be um you know for me personally when i was looking at the data um i realized that there were plenty of things that needed innovation but for me um specifically it was around it was finding something around what mattered most to me um and I think that if we are going to adapt 
artificial intelligence in healthcare, we need to begin not just with, um, you know, the, the usual solutions that we're building in now, which is like the OR or um, radiology, um, but we really need to start building in like patient interaction and also in healthcare provider interactions. Um, because if we look at the trends of healthcare teams and healthcare providers, um, nurses, physical therapists, doctors, everyone, um, what we're seeing is a decline in people um, being healthcare providers. So what we're seeing is either people are um, leaving the profession altogether or finding different ways to serve in healthcare. And this decline is going to be very, very detrimental in our healthcare, um, uh, I guess, like sector. And we really need to start solving for that now. We can't wait five years. We can't afford to wait five years for us to find solutions when the problem is like when the trends in the data clearly shows that we're going to have a problem in the next, you know, couple of years, not mm. even in the next, next decade, right? And so for me, what I find really exciting is the opportunity to find innovative healthcare AI solutions, not just in the ORs and in the IRs, um, but also in the, um, in the everyday uh, people who are actually using using tech, which is, you know, the patients and the healthcare teams. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a, a perfect segue into kind of the last area. I, a couple of comments on, on everything you just said. So here we are, we're in late 2022. Um, COVID <laughs> has had a huge impact on your world. And I know I want to say, you know, of course, thank you for being a part of, uh, of all the amazing things we saw in the in, in pouring outpouring of health professionals who were there and, and went through an incredibly arduous can't fathom a couple of years and continue to do so in some spots, uh, but especially here in New York. And you, you're exactly right. We've seen those numbers reflected in the number of people who are choosing to leave the profession. So a theme that I'm hearing often, whether it's on this show or elsewhere, is giving people back their time and uh, reducing some of that administrative burden and um, you know treating every patient encounter as an opportunity to connect rather than to input more data and those are all great themes um, coupled with your your last point about this is a this is going to happen right this is a seven to ten year event that uh, is the future of how we think about augmenting those professionals who choose to pursue healthcare pathways I think that's an incredibly important theme, especially as we look at funding, right? So funding, this is a world we talk about often, AI, I think record levels last year, first half of this year before the market um, changed on us was I think $3 billion first half this year, 10 billion last year, just unprecedented amounts of funding going into AI focused startups in healthcare. So we know those are seven to 10 year bets. So I, I'm curious now if, if the Funding is going to continue to pour in and people are excited and we we all agree that the future belongs to an augmented workforce and solving these challenges that you're describing in the ways that you're describing them. I, I'd love to hear from you where you see, because at the end of the day, we want to find the right partners and building the right solution is only effective if you find the right champions, if you find the right use cases. Uh, you're not a hammer searching for a nail, but you're finding those problems and addressing them with the right application at the right time. So where do you see when you look at the market, the healthcare market, all the places you've worked administratively with your family history, personally, um, where are you excited about possibly finding the right partners for something that could be built around that communication interaction piece? Well, the exciting thing, Tim, is I'm actually finding it in all the expected, um, uh, like, I guess, segues. Um, I'm mm -hmm. currently, you know, 
exploring opportunities um, with research centers, um, mm -hmm. uh, with primary care clinics, um, with right. hospitals. And this is really exciting because what it's showing us is, you know, one, people are more open to the idea of artificial intelligence being a part of their the healthcare solution. They, I think we've had enough, it, it's, it's, the idea has been adapted now in, in many ways. And it's just a matter of them being involved in some capacity. And this is why I'm encouraging, you know, the listeners and the audience to be really creative and open-minded with the different types of AI solutions or interventions that could um, come out over the course of the next like five, 10 years and beyond. Um, but yeah, the conversations that we're having right now are really with a variety of different um, partners. And mm -hmm. even though I know that what we're building is, is a very innovative solution, I can really picture a future where it is a solution for everyone and adaptable for everyone. Um, because, you know, when you're solving for a real problem in healthcare, there is no choice but to adapt that solution should it be effective. Because um, in the end, what the healthcare system wants is efficiency and, and efficiency comes in different, many different forms, but, um, you know, patient care is, is definitely on top of everyone's minds these days. And I feel like what, what we're building, um, really puts the patients ahead, um, and on top of, of the solution. And, um, yeah, we're, we're really excited to be able to have these, uh, partnership conversations, um, very early on in, in, in our journey. Well, I'm excited to follow the journey. I know you'll definitely have to come back on when you are a bit further to talk about some of those partnerships. And I know that there's some stuff cooking and uh, we will want an update, whether it's building on the theme of care at home or the consumerization and personalization of healthcare as consumers use it. I know all of these have to do with that communication piece and building that relationship and uh, helping providers to better understand the needs of their patients. So these are all big, big themes. Um, I'm excited to hear more about your, your use cases, the applications, and and where this turns out. So Kim, thank you for coming on. Before we before we end here, I want to make sure you share how can people get a hold of you, how can they connect, how can they continue to follow your story. Um. Well. Since we are preparing to come out of stealth over the course of the next six weeks, for now, people can just follow me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm connected Perfect. with you, Tim, so people can just look me up. Or you can follow me on Twitter. Um, my handle is honest underscore AI underscore. Um, it's a great and name. Thank you. Or you could um, send me an email at Kim at joinseek.ai. Perfect. We will make sure all of that is in the show notes. Um, but I encourage anyone listening to check out her Twitter and LinkedIn. She's very active uh, and a great source of education on the space and the challenges and all the ways that we might, uh, we might solve these problems she talked about earlier. So Kim, thank you again for coming on. Really good to to see you, to hear your story, and uh, excited to stay connected. Thanks, Tim. What an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Of course, my pleasure.